Welcome. People who live with ongoing pain face many challenges as they try to get the most out of their lives despite the pain. There seem to be many treatment options and it can be hard to choose between them. That's why if you're considering trying an opioid medicine, you need some basic information. This video aims to help you make an informed decision about starting an opioid medicine for your ongoing non-cancer pain. This video is not aimed at people taking opioids for cancer pain or palliative care. As you watch the video, note down anything you don't understand and any questions you want to ask your doctor. Use the information in this video to help you discuss your options with your doctor. To start with, what is an opioid medicine? Opioid medicines copy the way your body helps you deal with pain. They can affect the brain to make you notice less pain from disease or injury. Commonly used, opioid medicines contain active ingredients such as buprenorphine, codeine, morphine, oxycodone, fentanyl, tramadol and tapentadol. But opioids can affect things other than pain levels. There can be a lot of unwanted effects on the body when you take opioid medicines. Most people taking opioids long-term experience adverse effects. Some are very serious. For example, opioids may slow or even stop your breathing, which is why opioid overdoses are so dangerous. Opioid medicines have been used over many years to help people with ongoing pain, but experience and research now show that any early benefits, such as reducing pain and improving quality of life, are often lost over time because of adverse effects. It's a balancing act between what the medicine is doing for you and what it's doing to you. Many people find their pain improves when their opioid dose is reduced because of a recently recognised condition called opioid-induced hyperalgesia. This happens when taking opioid medicines long-term causes the nervous system to adapt, making the whole body more sensitive to pain. The discovery of opioid-induced hyperalgesia has led specialist pain doctors to recommend that you should stick to the lowest possible dose of opioids for the shortest possible time. Your doctor will work with you to decide the dose and treatment duration suitable for you. If you and your doctor are discussing whether an opioid medicine could be useful to help manage pain, here are some recommendations to guide you. Opioids should not be the first treatment you try. Opioid medicines are among the highest risk treatments for ongoing pain, so it makes sense to explore all your options. Managing pain successfully involves using a variety of strategies and getting the best out of these strategies. Options may include lifestyle changes, self-management skills, other medicines or surgery. Set goals with your doctor for your quality of life, not the level of pain you experience. Pain medicines are unlikely to get rid of your pain completely, and 30 years of research says that using medicines to help you manage your pain so that you can do things which add quality to your everyday life is much more successful than searching for complete pain relief. Communication between you and your doctor needs to be clear, honest and respectful. Opioids are more regulated than other prescription medicines. The rules your doctor must follow to prescribe them vary from state to state. If you are prescribed an opioid, discuss with your doctor how to ensure that you have access to a steady supply of medicine while staying within the regulations. The doctor may ask you to sign a contract or to specify which pharmacy you will collect your scripts from. If you lose your medication or use more than your doctor has prescribed so that you need your prescription earlier, this may cause difficulties with future prescriptions. Your doctor should regularly ask you whether you're getting any harmful effects of opioids, especially if the dose increases after a few months. Before starting treatment, your doctor can assess the possible risk of dependence based on your medical history. Your risk assessment could include blood tests, urine tests, bone scans or questionnaires. These all help to create a personalised plan. You and your doctor need to plan an exit strategy so you know when the time has come to reduce and stop the opioid. For example, if your agreed goals are not met or if the harms of opioid treatment are worse than the benefits for you, it's time to reduce the dose. If people think their opioids have stopped working as well as they once did, they are usually right. 
The good news is that your dose can be reduced safely and successfully by you and your doctor working together. As the dose comes down slowly, you may experience some withdrawal symptoms. However, these are short term and the pain will not usually change. You will usually feel more alert and have more energy. Now that you have seen the video, use these five points to have a conversation with your doctor. NPS Medicine Wise website has information on opioids and chronic non-cancer pain. Go to www.nps.org.au to find more.